Greetings to everyone in Bogota at the Neutrality Congress. My name is Pascal Lota. I'm an associate professor for neutrality studies at Kyoto University in faraway Japan. I congratulate you all for having gathered to discuss this extremely important and timely topic, which has so much potential to support peace. I was asked to speak about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, advantages and disadvantages of neutrality. And although I would love to talk to you for two, three, four hours about this topic, I will pack all I have to say into five minutes, because there is really only one thing that you need to understand to then deduct all the problems and opportunities of neutrality yourself. You only need to understand what it means to be neutral. And don't go to history, don't go to law, don't look at policies of individual countries, just understand the basic logic of neutrality. Being neutral doesn't at all mean doing nothing. It usually means the opposite. You usually have to do a lot in order to maintain an independent position. So conceptually speaking, neutrality is anywhere and everywhere a reaction to conflict. Neutrality is anywhere and everywhere a reaction to conflict in one way or another. What I mean with that is that the logic of neutrality dictates this. One of the usual mistakes is to think that neutrals, um, when there is a conflict between anyone, a country, two, uh, two countries, two people, two organizations, between B1, belligerent 1, and belligerent 2, when there's a conflict between them, then the neutral kind of sits in the middle, right? It's the, 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 famous, the famous picture of a weighing scale and the neutral is somewhere in the middle, like weighing both sides. This is a bad picture. Do not imagine neutrality as this because it will lead you astray. Imagine neutrality as a neutral actor, as the third part in a triangle, because the conflict between the belligerents, that one will go on whether or not there's a neutral. Now, if there is a neutral uh, that interacts with both belligerents, then the neutral position means that the neutral itself is at peace or, well, not at conflict, at, but usually during a war, not at peace with those who are at war with each other. So the neutral, the neutrality of a neutral actor is secondary, right? There's peace between the neutral and the belligerents, and then there's a war between the belligerents, and the neutrality of the neutral actor is always directed towards the conflict. That's why conflict is primary. If there's no conflict, there's nothing to be neutral toward. So, And the neutral actor is not neutral toward the belligerents, it's neutral toward the conflict, and it will try, the neutral actor will try to maintain a normal peaceful relationship with the belligerents. Now, this also means that the neutral actor is in fact not part of the primary conflict, but it is part of the entire conflict constellation. It is somehow in related to the conflict that's going on, although not directly involved in it. Imagine how you would react if we had a man in the moon and if the man in the moon sat on the other side of the of the moon and looked out into the void of the universe and had never heard of Russia or of Ukraine or of a war going on between them. The man in the moon, we wouldn't call that thing, uh, that person, a neutral actor. The man in the moon would just have by virtue of not knowing anything about the conflict would just be outside of everything, but it would not be neutral. In order to be neutral, you need to have knowledge of the conflict and you need to have taken a position. And the position is your own, your position and not the position of one of the belligerents. If you do that, if you, if you side with one of the two belligerents, well, then you're not neutral, then you are an ally and you will fight. So in terms of, uh, of the, the uh, Thucydides, you, Neutrals are friends to all and foe to neither, to no foe to nobody, or in Twitter terms, something is hashtag not my war. I will remain on my own side and I will I will choose my policies myself. So um, from this you can then deduce all of the problems that follow. Uh, without conflict, no neutrality. It means that if you are an ardent neutralist, you accept the fact that conflicts and wars exist, but you choose not to engage with the conflict, or not to not to pick a side, but to remain on your own side, which then also means that uh, neutrality allows for the continuation of peaceful relationships while accepting that there is a war and 
a war relationship and the new the, this, the neutral in a in a conflict will always be uh, attacked by both sides b1 and b2 will always tell the neutral you are why are you why are you not supporting us not supporting me means supporting the other one you are mean so the neutral will never be on the winning side of a war but if neutrality is being played well you will also never be on the losing side but nobody will love you nobody loves the neutrals because they never they don't participate in the wars and one of the two sides is going to win a war and the winning party will always tell you well you should have been with us now it's too late la 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 and you have to defend your position over and over again but in the words of uh, uh mr van clausewitz this famous realist if war is the continuation of politics by other means, what he said, then neutrality is the continuation of politics by the same means. So you, may, you, may, you remain engaged, you do diplomacy, you don't go to war, you do not fall into the trap of believing one narrative over another. And from that, opportunities arise, risks arise. Think about it yourself. Just keep in mind, you are not in between the belligerents. You are the third part of a triangle. And you try to do your own thing, what's good for you, and hopefully what's good for the planet.